Yeah. Thank you very much. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you guys for all coming out. Um, I hope you enjoyed this talk. Like Alita said, uh, the goal of this is to learn what street epistemology is, and I think it's a fun topic. So, how about this? Should I move this up a little higher? Yes. Cool. How about this? Can you guys hear? Testing. La. Yeah. Nice. Everyone in the back. All right. That's gonna be a meow. A meow. I do songs by request too. Okay, so um, let's start with some basic introductions. Hello, my name is Dr. Tyrone Wells, and I'm working on a way to talk with anyone about anything. And again, just want to thank RET for uh, having me again about a couple of years ago. I spoke here to talk about some of my scientific research, but now I'd like to talk about a hobby that I fell into um, that I think has solved a particular problem that I was facing when I was an atheist. Uh, particularly when I was transitioning too from theism and I here today because I believe that this hobby and that this strategy could be a solution for you too. Um, before I begin though I'd like to just give a big shout out to Carl the technical wizard as well as Alita and Larry. Thank you guys all for helping coordinate this event allowing me to be able to come here. Um, it means a lot to me and this is actually my first talk on street epistemology so really if there's anyone here that can leave feedback, I'd really appreciate it. Um, I don't, I, I'm a really big believer in critical feedback growth and any anything that you guys think I wasn't clear on, anything that you think I can improve upon, anything that you think that I could maybe elaborate a little bit better, I would appreciate it if you like just give me some feedback afterwards. Or uh, I'll also be handing out uh, these cards, which are basically like my business card, well, hobby business cards. You pass those around. And on the back is my contact info. This is really weird. This is just, just keep getting lower. <laughs> okay. Anyway, uh, sounds good, everybody. All right, let's get into it. So, as I was transitioning from being a theist to an atheist, uh, the majority of that occurred during like my midterm year of my grad school experience. And I got my degree from a PhD in biochemistry from the School of Chemistry and Biochemistry. So I was learning a lot about like evolution, learning a lot about biochemical mechanisms. And my understanding was that I was getting better explanations for things rather than just answers. So like the questions that I was raised to believe to be true my entire life, I was realizing that through my grad school experience as I was meeting new people, uh, going to new places, being exposed to new perspectives, my standard of evidence was increasing and improving as well as myself. And the things that I was taught since I was a young child to believe to be true no longer were meeting that standard of evidence. And it was a big, amazing, world-changing, perspective-altering you know, uh, uh, realization because I realized that when I didn't have a good reason to believe in a God anymore, I was isolated or like one of the only people around me seemingly that came to that understanding. Even in a scientific setting, it was very common for people to have like some sort of spiritual or theistic-based belief. And the conversations that I would have with people after my realization was really difficult. Um, I realized I didn't have an effective way of talking to people about my belief without making them feel defensive or making them feel like they were in an argument. In fact, my conversations would turn into debates and then ultimately into arguments. And the people that I was around never felt more further away as a result. Um, I was beginning to feel as if there was like an invisible wall between myself and the people I cared about, the people I worked with, the people I called my friends, because we couldn't connect through this really simple understanding that I came to and without making people feel uneasy. And so I tried to throw away this topic. I tried to say, you know, well, to each his own. I'll just agree to disagree. I won't worry about it. You know, forget about it. But I still thought the wall was there. And I didn't know if there was a strategy to get through that wall or if there was a strategy to get through that technique or that conversational barrier that I was putting up between myself. And I think everyone does that in some regard with a number of topics. Yeah? It's not something that's uh, specific to atheists. Maybe theists feel that same way too. It could just be a human uh, nature issue. So what would be a good way of talking to people about anything? And that's when I stumbled upon like street epistemology. It was a really, really cool way. I actually uh, went to a meetup group with uh, Ask. And uh, was, 
I normally ask people questions when I was at that meetup group. It's like, you just recently became an atheist? Like, how did you, what happened? Like, what, 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 what was the thing that made you like change your mind? I'm really interested. I'm really fascinated about that. And one of the guys said, oh yeah, that sounds like you're doing this one thing that this guy on YouTube's doing. And I was like, oh, that, like, what's he do? And he's like, he just goes on the street and starts asking people about their faith. And I'm like, that's really uncomfortable. <laughs> that just rises up my anxiety left and right. But I finally saw some of the videos that he was doing. And I saw that his approach was pretty similar to what I was doing, except his strategy was really getting through to people while not making them defensive or turning the conversation into an argument. I want to show you some of those techniques today, as well as how I do it and some things that I've learned in the process. So here is my outline. Two planes. Yeah, that's cute. <laughs> anyway, uh, the first thing that I'm going to teach you about or talk about is what is SE? Uh, the second is why use SE? Why empower yourself with this conversational tool that allows you to talk to anybody? And then finally, how SE works. I'm going to break it down to a really, really awesome format such that by the end of this conversation, all of you guys will be able to know exactly how to handle any conversations that you guys have in the future that can hopefully get people to think about the methods that they're using to reach their conclusions and whether or not that method's reliable. All right, so first things first, let's talk about street epistemology. Um, I know when I first saw this you know, term, the weirdest word that popped out to me was this one on the bottom. I'm like, okay, so moon speak already, special club, what's going on here, right? Well, um, epistemology is just uh, the study of how we come to know things. It's the theory of knowledge. Um, so an example of that would be just, how do we come about under, to understand things? What's the process that we use to understand things? And then the street. The street is just a reference to an uh, informal way to approach the conversation. Like the, the key point is that's informal. There's no strict flow chart that you follow. There's no strict format. And a lot of people can contribute to this using their own styles and particular skill sets that they're particularly good at. And so when you combine those two terms together, street epistemology just becomes an informal way to ask people how they reach their conclusions. Typical questions in SE are like, how'd you figure that out? You know, how can we test that? Is that method reliable? What's a good way to reach that conclusion? These are all fantastic questions in SE because the goal of SE is to get the person to think about how they arrived at their conclusion. Um, why use SE at all? Why is that even important? Well, when I get into this technique in more detail, I can tell you that some of the major benefits is that, one, this is an entirely unbiased approach. It works for everybody. It works for any topic. It's not a tool specifically catered to atheists. It's a, cool, it's a tool that's fair use for everybody and everyone can use it. And the more people that use it, the better we can get at doing this as a group, um, as well as a culture. It's always good to ask why you know something, and it's always good to be able to realize when you don't know something in order to get the best place to start learning about new things. Um, I also think that it works well as solo, one-on-one -on -one conversations, or it can work well in a group. Um, I use it as a self-assessment tool all the time, particularly in my work. Um, it's it's just really, really versatile and the number of people can help. So it's not just one person or a group of people, it'll help yourself as well. But I think probably the most important part is that it avoids drama. And we're gonna get into a video next, I hope the audio is good. <laughs> but but, but the, the avoiding drama is like one of the most crucial aspects of this because it keeps the conversations productive and it keeps the conversations positive. And I think we all are aware of like some of the tones of the conversations that we have with you know, particularly people who believe. I know I do. I, I know I've been uh, subject to a number of arguments, losing and winning and, but either way, I don't really feel like I win even at the end of the conversation because both people are so heated afterwards. So I want to show an example of a bunch of what it looks like when people are normally communicating with each other without utilizing SE as an approach to get there. I'd be a lot freer if people like you were put in prison as retaliation for the collective crime of racism, anti-Semitism, misogyny, and homophobia. God blesses me. You're judgmental. How do you and deal with sin like in your you life? Perpetrate this mm -hmm. every day by telling people what their rights are mm -hmm. and what they aren't. Because people like you that ruin this world. You're judgmental. Christians are responsible for slavery. Do you know why you're getting upset about it? I'm getting upset because, because you are stepping on the rights the, of thousands no, of this Americans. This is a freedom to me. You're judgmental. 
You are lost in a fantasy. Yes. Okay. You should preach the word. Preach what? I'm. The gay people can't. Sir, love you can't like spit on. You can't spit on you me, sir. Well, I know this. I could look at that sun. I could look at the sky. I could see the trees, and I know there is life. So if there is life, there has to be a creator of life. No, yes. there doesn't. It's it's a All you have to do is provide evidence. Can you provide evidence? I'm about to. Okay, provide evidence. Evidence. The Bible says the Bible says the Bible says evidence. evidence. That, Who calls God? Know, listen, that's listen, the key point. I can listen, trap well, you. I know, right, I know I can what trap you're you saying. every time. But the law, of course, you know what I'm saying. But and your arrogance as a Christian, yeah, you know that. How old are you? If you, you don't have to believe it if you don't know it. If you don't know it, then think about it. No, 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 no. Do you think God gave you a brain? Again, how do you deal with the, you breaking the law of God? How do you deal with that? How do you deal with? With, with, with this delusion of yours, that uh, there's some invisible man in the sky sitting well, on a cloud. Well, it's not just that. Down bolts so you don't believe that Jesus walked the earth? No! The Christians are responsible for slavery! You just need Absolutely. To, to mock. Okay. Yes, that's exactly what I mean. Mock your religion into extinction. That's exactly wow. what it should be. There's no way you're going to be able to do that. It's already God, happening. God is more powerful. It's already happening. So you have it's not a fairy tale. It's because a fairy tale. You know, I'm a born again Christian. Oh, born again. Baptized in uh, Jesus' who do you? name. Filled with the Holy Jesus Ghost. Who? It's God who works Jesus in me. Who? It's a false Lord. It's not true. Give me a hearing. It is Give wrong. Give me. Didn't your parents teach you men? Is he right next to you? Are you holding his hand? I, yes, I am. Oh, uh, you need some medication, my oh, friend. Hitler. Who designed God? You're caught in a trap now. It's a logical trap where you listen. I'm the ignorant one. I use reason and logic. The Bible is no more proof than God exists, than a comic book is no more proof than Superman exists. You are sick. You are a sick person. Thank you very much. You're welcome. You're judgmental. It's not going to be a two way conversation. There's no point. Bye. Bye. Atheism! What is interesting here, actually, is that we've got people from different faiths and, and, the, and who all believe in some kind of heaven in a different sense. Um, but every single one of them believes in this heaven on the basis of faith. And faith, by definition, is believing in things without evidence. And uh, personally, I don't do that because I'm not an idiot. Oh, whoa! Ouch! I'm so glad you guys laughed at that. <laughs> it was like uh, a lot of moments where I noticed, like, oh man, that was just me. I don't know. Three years ago, like you're caught in the trap. You didn't realize that, did you? I caught you. I used reason and logic, and now you're trapped. Never works. So, right? How's the audio in the back? Can you guys hear pretty well? Yeah, for real. Okay, great. Okay, cool. So, those were examples of what conversations look like when you normally don't use SE. Hold up. All right. Those are conversations where when you don't use SE. Uh, they tend to like devolve into like really accusational terms, uh, people not really being open-minded about changing their mind. I want to show you an example of what it actually looks like when SE is employed. Yeah, so yeah, just have this hobby where I chat with people about anything. Uh, is there a particular belief you want to chat about? Is there what? A particular belief that you want to chat about. Um, something you really think is true. Christianity. Yeah. All right, anyway, yeah, no uh, Ty is my name. I've got a five-minute timer. Okay. Belief any two people can talk about anything. Is there anything that strongly motivates you? Anything um, that you think God. is true? God? Yeah. That's a heavy topic. You want to talk about that for five minutes? Sure. Yeah? Uh, yeah, I can talk about, I mean, I was, my background is Christianity. Mm -hmm. um, I was raised Southern Baptist. I believe in God, so I, I, that would be the thing I'm, I'm the most certain about. Okay. First, got to get a sense of your confidence that okay. God exists on okay. a scale from one to ten. Uh, ten. Ten for sure. Ten. The existence I, I, of God. I mean, I am 100% yeah. certain that higher power exists. Okay. Um, 95. 95. Mm -hmm. All right. Very confident. From like zero to 100%. 100%. 100%. You don't need any more evidence. You're absolutely close on the position. You think that's absolutely true? Yeah. Okay. 100%. What got you to that 100%? Uh, really, well, uh... So I go to a Christian school, and I've learned, I've taken a bunch of classes on um, theories and all these different things, and it just makes sense to me. It kind of, like, hits home. I, and for me, it's just a meditation thing. That okay. I realize that it's just, it's just a, a, a full-on total goodness of the earth, mm -hmm. all the plants. Um, I believe that there is something that has been working on my behalf in this universe. Whatever is here had to come from somewhere. Okay. 
uh, it's hard uh, to imagine coming right here. from somewhere without some sort of first cause. Okay. okay. Yeah, I know it's hard to think that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, how does something making sense to you relate to the actual truth of it? So, like, could someone actually be mistaken about a belief that makes sense to them? Yeah, I think they could. Okay. That is a uh, very good point. I would say. So you, oh, that's a that's an interesting perspective. So you believe that, wow, I've never ever heard that before. Well, th that's an interesting, you, you know, we've come around to an interesting point that oh. I never verbalized to myself before, but I do see that, you know, I'm starting to see just from this discussion. And the benefits right, I get from it. Right, right, right. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. That's a good I would like perspective. To, I would like to believe it if it's true. Right, but... But yeah. because nobody can question it, nobody can prove yeah. it, you can't prove faith, you can't prove any of these things, it's like, why am I believing this? Hmm. You may be onto something, man. Yeah, so. Th That's just, powerful yeah. stuff, man. Thanks, yeah, it's just stuff to think about, maybe. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for that. That's really enlightening. I, did, I never thought about it like that. That's true. Right. That's a good way to look at it. I like to think about it that way. And that, if anything, that puts you in a more reasonable position. Hmm. Well, thanks. Yeah? All right. Cool. Have a good evening. It was you good too. chatting with you. Good chatting oh. with you as well. All right. Have a good evening. <laughs> Have a good one. Isn't there a huge difference there? You guys no see one, that? No one left angry. No one left angry. And people were open-minded. People were willing to change their perspective a little bit. Uh, are you covering your ears? <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Again, could we get like a quick little clap for Carl? Thank you for setting that up. I appreciate that. But anyway, what if I told you in a five minute conversation, you can actually go from a person who's 100% confident for God's truth, 100% confident that all laws need to be replaced with the Ten Commandments, to in a five minute conversation, you have some good points. Maybe I'm not as confident in my God claim anymore. I don't know what would be, I don't think the Ten Commandments is the best idea anymore. I'm going to have to think about that. And then you can end the conversation on a positive note and have, allow them to naturally come on their own machinations to change their own mind for more reasonable conclusions and better methods. Let's talk about how that works. Okay, so the way how I think about it, and this isn't the only diagram, and it subject to change, we'll evolve as we go, but uh, there's typically the person that you're talking to, and they have a conclusion. And between the person and the conclusion, there's a through line that I call the method. It's the reasoning that they're using to reach their conclusion. Uh, in reality, the, my mind, the way how I see this uh, relationship is a lot more like this. And that's because people tend to personally invest a lot into themselves as well as their conclusions. You'll hear that when they say, I'm a Christian. I'm a Baptist. I'm an atheist. I'm a, a, a Vols fan. Or go Yellow Jackets. <laughs> anyway. So uh, the, the, the thing is, when you try to address questions towards the conclusion, particularly as an atheist to a theist, it doesn't work out as well because as far as the theist is concerned or the person who holds that conclusion is concerned, they're one and the same, and they'll treat that as a personal attack on them. <clears throat> they'll think, he's, he's talking about my faith, he's talking about me, and you'll get responses that are very similar to as if you had just called them or, and questioned them. What's better is to question the method, and what SC is best geared towards is asking questions about the method because there's a lot less ego invested there. And by attacking the method or by challenging the method, by targeting the method with your questioning, you can allow the person to avoid like these pratfalls of where they invested their personal ego into and allow them to have an open, thoughtful conversation about how they reach their conclusions. One of two things will happen in SC. One, they'll either replace the method that they have with a better method. And as atheists, I think we should be absolutely open to that. We should be looking for better methods to believe what we believe. So that's a great improvement. Otherwise, the other alternative is that they can't find a method to get to their conclusion. And as a result, you know, they can't get to the conclusion anymore. And they end up being a person that's still open for finding better methods for better conclusions or more reliable conclusions with better methods. And that's the basis of how SE works. The way how we can do this, and I'll, show, I'll break this down um, with Tim, who you saw in the video. Again, we have our person, we have our method, and we have our conclusion. 
The kind of questions that you ask are really important and you want to make sure that you're not targeting the person, which I show in blue, or the conclusion, which I'll show in red, but the method shown in green. So if you got a question, for example, like, I know God's real because, you know, I, I, I went to sleep and um, I just felt like I was touching and, and speaking with God in that one moment. It was, a, it was a real personal experience and I can't deny that. You can ask a lot of questions about that, but you want to make sure that you're targeting the right thing. Not the person, not the conclusion, but the method. I'll show you what it looks like when you target the, met, the, the person. This is an example of questions that will trigger a person make them more dogmatically closed. So for example, I know God's real because of my personal experiences. Okay, well, your personal experience doesn't make your God real. People say that all the time. Why are you any different? You're not making any sense. Like at the tip of a mountain, echoes, <coughs> stuff like that. None of those questions are a great way to open up the person. You wanna ask questions that continue a conversation rather than shut down the conversation. You want to ask questions that are like an open door rather than a closed door. The, the, the path to SE to work efficiently is when you will let the interview partner do a lot of the heavy lifting, do a lot of the thinking, and by asking or by making responses that cut them down or shut the conversation short, they'll be less open to reflecting on how they arrived at their belief. And then they, will be not, they won't be able anymore to question the method that they use to get to their conclusion. Let's look at what happens when you question the conclusion. It's the same thing. I know my God's real because of my personal experiences. Well, that's not good evidence. I've said that before a lot of times. It's a judgment, and it's also an opinion that I'm throwing out on top of them. The goal of SC is to peel back the layers that get to the conclusion, not add more layers on them. So try to keep, if you have a bias, you know, like I, for one, I agree with the point, but it's not a good way to get the audience, who's the person that you're talking to, to also agree with you. And if your goal is to try to help them think, don't try to shut them down. Here's some other things that I've been guilty of saying. Well, you know, with all due respect, I don't believe that. Could we like talk about maybe something else? Or like, I, I hear what you're saying, but I'm not getting there. These are again, judgments that the person will pick up on. When you're challenging their conclusion, they'll treat it as a personal attack and they won't be able to be open about thinking about the method that got them to the conclusion. That's the goal of SC. Here's another example. That doesn't make any sense. Echo, okay. So I think we get the point now, uh, not, to talk, not to attack the person, not to attack the conclusion, but the method. What does it look like when we question the method? I know my God is real because of my personal experiences. Personal experiences could, is it possible to have a personal experience that might lead you to a false conclusion? It's a fair question to ask, and you'd be surprised how open people are to talk about that when you're not challenging them or their conclusion. Is the method that they're using reliable? If it's not reliable, that's a discussion to continue to have, and it's something for them to think about. How much confidence are they putting on a potentially unreliable method? Here's another question. Is there a better way to reach that conclusion, the personal experience? Another great question. You're already, you're not making any insinuations. It's a fair question to ask. If they say no, this is absolutely the best method, that's another fair question. That's, I mean, that's a very fair topic to like bring up. Like, okay, so like what other ways have we used personal experiences to come to true conclusions? Like, is that better, or like in scientific world or engineering world, can I use personal experiences instead of like math and science to like come to true conclusions? You might be onto something potentially really useful. We should write a paper about this. Let's get a Nobel Prize. Well, don't go that far. <laughs> but is there a better way to reach that conclusion than a personal experience? That's a great question to ask. It's just a nice, simple way to get them to continue to think about the reasoning that they gave you. And here's another good one. Would a different personal experience affect your belief? Are you at that foundational level of their belief? Are, have you picked the right belief or the, the most important one to the interview partner? Because if it doesn't affect their belief at all, if they had a different personal experience, that's not the belief or the method that you want to talk about. You want to find out what's behind that. So if they say, no, it won't affect my belief either way, regardless of whatever personal experience I have, I'm still going to believe in this guy. Well, then what's the real reason that you believe in this guy? Because it's not personal experience. It doesn't seem to have an effect at all. Let's dig deeper. And that's the goal. You don't want to change the mind in one simple step, one quick phrase. You're, you're chipping away at the armor. You're peeling back layers. And what they'll be more open to do is re refine a reasoning and change maybe the aspect of how they reach their conclusion rather than the conclusion all at once. So you'll say, they'll say things like, well, maybe it's not personal experience, I, but I do know that there's a lot of science that proves my God. 
So I know I came to my God belief because of science. I think there's a lot of good evidence out there. And for things like this, I generally just like to ask clarification questions. What do you mean by that? Sometimes it's good enough just to rephrase what they're saying, because when people are speaking, they aren't processing it in the same way as if they were hearing it. And so I've had people say, I believe my God because of science. And I'll respond back. It sounds like you're saying that there's, you, you have, you believe in your God because of science. And they'll say, no, 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 I, no, that's not what I meant at all. I meant that there's a lot of scientists that believe in my God. That's a completely different thing. That's a very, very different claim. And it's worthwhile to just rephrase and get clarification because the way how people talk, sometimes they don't even hear the words that are coming out of their mouth sometimes. So it's also a nice way to just slow down the conversation and get the expectation set up that your goal is really not to like judge them, but to understand how they came to their conclusion and determine whether or not that method that they use to get to their conclusion is reliable. Here's another one. Is science a reliable way to test the supernatural? I typically like to ask people the nature of their God in as, much, as specific terms as possible before we begin. I also use something like a confidence test. I'll ask them like, so like, can you talk to me about this God? Like you said Christian, but like, is that a specific denomination? Is he like all powerful, all this? Like, okay, it sounds pretty supernatural. Is that fair? Yeah, okay. We'll have the conversation. We'll get to the science claim. And I'll say things like, well, is science a good way to test the supernatural? Do we have a science detector? Like, do those things exist? Or like, do we have a means of testing that? Can... <laughs> they might show me an ad on Amazon. And they'll be like, yeah, here's a science detector, a God detector right here. I'll be like, I can't buy that. <laughs> I want to see it. And if they, like, again, you want to be open to whatever they're saying. If they do have a way to test the supernatural with a scientific claim, be open to it. Research it. Be an open mind. You want to be as open-minded as the person that you want in front of you. Set a good example. So be aware that, you know, shutting down, you don't want to ask questions that shut down the conversation. You want to ask questions that open the conversation. And asking if science is a reliable way to supernatural, fair question, because now you're just comparing different methods with each other. You're staying focused on the method. And again, if science is not a super, a way, a reliable way to test the supernatural, what does that leave you with? If science is limited, what's the real foundation of this belief? I'm not saying that you're wrong. I'm saying there's something more important to you than science if we can both agree that science isn't a good way to test this belief, right? That's when you start to get towards the fundamental reasoning, so the fundamental methods. Fundamental methods sound like, well, without faith, I couldn't believe my God. Without X, I couldn't be just as confident in this position. I can't come here to this belief without X. Whatever that X is, typically it's faith. That's the foundational claim. And the why, the questions that you ask at that point, once you realize that it will affect their confidence, those questions turn to be a little bit different. What you want to do is clarify. Again, still engage with them, still think about like how they reached it, but also ask them the questions, questions about the words that they're using. Because just because I have a definition of what their foundation is, or like things like faith, doesn't mean that we're sharing the same definitions between the two. We might have the same vocabulary, but different definitions. So make sure you're on the same page. If they have faith as a reasoning, ask them, you know, is faith a reliable way to reach a true conclusion? Is your ex a reliable way to reach a true conclusion? Can it ever be wrong? Do other people utilize it and get to wrong conclusions? If that's the case, how reliable is it? If it's not as reliable, are there other ways that we could use to try to get to those same conclusions? And if not, how confident are you really that, you know, this being exists or that this belief is true? if we don't have a reliable way to get to that conclusion. If they, if they say they don't know, if they say they're thinking about that, these are all fantastic responses. In fact, there's a number of really good responses that you'll get by just asking simple questions that target the method. Some of them are like, oh my gosh, I'm thinking, I'm thinking. That's the perfect answer. You want people to think about stuff like this. That's an interesting point. I never thought about that before. I had a lady say that to me. It was like, maybe like, I won't lie, like about 40 times during the conversation. It was a little weird. <laughs> but, but it's good that they're acknowledging that the points that you're making because it shows that they're being open. And it's not necessarily a defensive statement. It's, I never really thought, I, I never had a chance to think about that. That's a really good point, as we've seen in the video before. Well, I don't know. I don't know, in my opinion, is not just an out, but one of, or by that I mean, not just a thing that people say, but it's literally the best place to start learning from. And when you can get a person from, I'm 100% confident that this is true, to I don't know if that's, I don't know. 
I don't know. Pause. Thinking. Time to think. That's that's you've you've done your job. That's the best thing that could happen in a conversation. You also want people to think. You also want to give time for people to think. So if they are pausing, just give them the time to do so. You want to just have the opportunity for them to critically think about how they arrived at the method and determine if that methodology that they're using is reliable. I want to show an example in its full, you know, form. Um, let's see how we're doing time. I think we're doing pretty good. Uh, this guy's name was Tim. Wonderful guy. One of my first talks. So it's also one of my longer talks too. But, uh, his position was that he believed in a God based on personal experiences. That's where we started off from. And I think we had a really positive talk by the end. What something I want to note from the beginning to the end of the conversation is his concept of I don't know. When he first says, I don't know, he's not really like, listen, I'm 90% confident that God exists, but I don't know. Eh, eh, eh. You know, I'm as high as I possibly can be without sounding crazy. And then at the end of the conversation, much more open to it. That's one thing I want to point out. Um, there's some other notes at the bottom of the uh, video, and those will be like some of the comments that go on in my head as we have our conversation. Anyway, I'll get straight to it. I think it's easier to believe in God mm -hmm. than it is not to believe in God. I think okay. not believing in God, God is, is harder because there's just so much... Sorry, I thought she was wearing a panda suit outfit. <laughs> and I like to break... Do I have to get up and run? Would you mind if I recorded it? <clears throat> no, you can go ahead and do that. It's fine. I'm Ty. It's nice to meet you. Ty, I'm Tim. Glad to meet you, brother. Tim, nice to meet you, man. Uh, so, yeah, like I said, just have a belief where uh, any two people can have a conversation for five minutes. Is there anything that you strongly believe is true? Something that motivates you? Something you're certain about? Um, something I'm certain about. Yeah. Um, the more absolute or the more confident you are, the better. Um, I don't know. I guess... Um, I believe in God, so I, I, that would be the thing I'm, I'm the most certain about. Okay, keep it open. You want to talk about God? Talk about God. That's a heavy topic. Yeah, it is. Yeah, no, it's, uh, I was like, God, that's the one thing I... It's, it's one of those things you don't bring up, that in politics. So, um, yeah, one of the big things that I do with this project is just trying to... It's a hobby that I got to show that you can literally talk about anything, mm -hmm. and I'm just here to have, like, a positive conversation. It's gotcha. not an argument or anything like that. All right. You, would you mind if we talked about God? Normally what no, we do No, is, we can. That's fine. Normally, whatever the topic is, I just generally kind of, like, challenge... If you said you like potato chips, I would have been like, so have you tried pretzels? Like, it's that yeah, sort right, of... Right, right, right. Yeah, right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand. Would you mind if I had that kind of conversation? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's totally fine. The big G-O-D? Yeah. Start on the timer. Okay, so what made you so, com or how confident are you that a I, God exists, and what God are we talking about? Uh, that's an excellent question. Um, the God I'm talking about is um, the, the Christian God. Okay. You know? um, so I believe in Jesus, and he's the son of, of uh, God. Is it any kind of particular sect of Christianity, Baptist, Protestant? Uh, I, I, was, I was raised Southern Baptist, Southern but Baptist. I, uh, I, I, I don't necessarily... I, I don't think you have to be Southern Baptist or anything like that. I, I believe that you just need to believe in God and, okay. and, and follow his word. Okay. Um, okay. So how uh, confident are you that this God exists? Uh, I would say... From like a scale of 0 to 100. Oh, zero right, right. All doubt. All doubt. 100%. I'll, zero questions. Th this is awful. I'm going to say it. Yeah. But I'd say 90%. 90%? Because, I mean, you know, you, I, I'm a, I feel like I'm a very... Um, uh, realistic person, you know, you sure. gotta have. There's doubts and everything. I'm never 100 percent on anything. So I love that attitude because there has to be doubts, you know, because I haven't personally met him and you know sat down and had a conversation with him. So if you did meet him and sit down and have a conversation with him, would that take you to a higher confidence? Would you say? Like uh, if you could, like, I think it'd make me to like 95 percent. Okay, so like, okay. you know, there's always the, you know, there's always good questions because I always like to see the other person's side of, uh, you know, side of things, side of the argument. Okay, because like. You know who made him? Where did he come from? Whoa, you know? whoa, whoa, yeah, right. Whoa, yeah, you know, yeah. Those yeah. are deep questions. Yeah, um, it is. This is really deep. I'm enjoying right, this. Right, right, right. So let me ask you a question. Ninety percent. That's still pretty high up that's there. That's pretty high. Yeah. What got you to that high confidence? What, what got me there yeah. is just my personal experiences. Okay. Um, and plus, you know, of course, I mean, I think fifty percent of it was just me growing up in that situation, that environment. Sure. Uh, the other part is just like I said, it, it's my personal experiences, um, things that I've that I've, I've been involved in and stuff that okay. have made me that have gotten me there and you know that's why I'm 90% I'm, I'm fairly confident do you think if you had a different set of personal experiences you would arrive at a different God 
Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, if I was, uh, you know, honestly, say we grew up in India. And, yeah, if I, and I'd you be Hindu. That believed in yeah. Vishnu. Or right, right, like right. That. Yeah. Would that mean that you would believe? Would you be telling me about how you're ninety percent confident that Vishnu exists at this moment? Um. Well, I I probably I, I wouldn't say ninety percent, but I'd probably be at least fifty or sixty or seventy. I mean, you'd, you know? you'd be pretty pretty yeah. high up there. Okay. I think I think be, uh, I think. Um, where you are you're brought up at does have a major role in what you believe okay now that being said um i'm not i'm not 100 percent sure that you know there's not just one god and different people call him different names oh i see what you you're see saying. What I'm saying okay uh now i think there's some crazy stuff out there and you know <laughs> like wiccans and stuff like that people i don't know about that but, okay so but I, I i could see go on i'm sorry i'm interrupting no i Feel free to continue to talk, but I was saying um, I'm kind of interested in the methodology that you use to come to one god over other gods. It seems like you do have some bias towards certain proposed gods, and then are cool with others because you right. think it's just different people calling them. Right, right, right. Um, what What's the distinction, or what to you are you using to grade? Well, that's a real god, but people are just calling it a different name, right. and that's just nonsense. Uh, that's an excellent question. Now I'm going to say something, and <clears throat> I could be 100% wrong, which I've been wrong Whoa. before. So, no, well, what, well if, you, if you read the Bible, mm -hmm. uh, it, 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 I feel like it, it describes what's happened in, since the beginning of time. Okay. Now, is it 100% literal? No, I don't believe that. But, like, because there's some people that think the, the earth is 5,000 years old. Yeah. But, some people are gracious to give it 6,000. Oh, yeah. Crazy, <laughs> right? No, but I mean, I, I feel like if you read the Bible in, in the way it's like Genesis and how everything happened, I mean, it's kind of basically like how it happened. You mm. know, it's not 100% like, oh, in seven days, you know, man was created. But, you know, you know, the earth was created first. Then you had waters on the earth. Then... Uh, God created the, the animals and then he created men. Okay. And that's kind of what happened. Oh. Which, you know, that, you know, when someone, it's, that's just one part of the story. But, you know, when you add up a bunch of little parts and it kind of describes how everything kind of what, evolved. What confirmed that that was how it happened for you to say that that was the Bible conferring with that story? What was, the, what's the other thing that you're looking at to Well, I'm just that? saying like from what I've learned from science, uh, you know, cause okay. like, you know, first, you know, First, the earth was made, mm -hmm. you know, then, you know, eventually the earth cooled down and there was water on the planet. Mm -hmm. Then after that, I mean, this took billions of years, okay. you know, or millions of years and billions of years. Yeah. And then finally we had, uh, you know, basic life. Sure. Then eventually humans came around. Mm -hmm. And so I think, I think, the, you know, just using certain parts of the Bible, it kind of describes what happened, but, you know, when you're trying to tell us to human, yeah, thirty thousand or you know, not thirty thousand, but uh, ten thousand years ago, yeah, it could be a little muddled. Yeah, but... yeah, you, it's going to get muddled, and you're going to have you have to down it. You sure. know, you have to dummy it down for him. Because I... these, you know, cats are, you know, they're just out here in this field. You know, how so? Can you admit you had mentioned that personal experience is what got you to the belief that a god, but you don't specifically mean, I guess, the Christian god. Like if it turned out that scientists was able to show that a different god exists mm -hmm. would you be fine with that and just say hey i i've already developed the habit of saying science discovered something and i looked in my holy book and it seems like that's what it was trying to talk to what if it wasn't your holy book that had the most accurate depiction of what science said yeah and it was someone else would you then i, I would to that be religion? open to that i'd be open to that yeah okay, okay. but i think there's enough proof in the Bi in the Bible that it I mean it's I think it's that one I see and, and also I mean heck if you I mean every religion's got its creation story and they're all basically the same mm -hmm. and that's what makes what that's what leads me to the fact that I think we're all talking about the same God okay you know it just Can it's got mixed you, up yeah do you think personal experience is a reliable way to come to a true conclusion uh yes and no okay. uh, because you know there's I mean you have people that are mentally sick mm -hmm. you know and they could see, they, they, they could see something and, and, and take it the wrong way, mm. you know, and, and, and I think that happens to even people that aren't mentally sick. They yeah. just, they just see something and they misinterpret, well, like, it. misinterpret it. Yeah. yeah. Um, then is it possible to have a personal experience that leads you to a conclusion in it for, 
for that conclusion to actually not be true. Could you say it one more time? Could I have a personal experience that leads me to a conclusion that's false? Oh, yeah. I mean, people do it all the time. Okay. I mean... um, is there anything else that's getting you to that high confidence value? Because it sounds like if personal experience is getting you to such a high confidence, but you yeah. know that con- personal experience could be right or wrong. Right. But it's, what's it's, actually getting it, you to that 90%? Well, it's like I said, it's, you know, kind of like what I grew up with. Yeah. Then the other part is like what I've learned, mm. you know, from mm. like reading the Bible and then comparing it to what science has taught me. Would you say that's more important than your upbringing? Because if you, you, I think you told me if you had been up, brought by, you know, Indian people, right, right, right. you would believe yeah, right. in a different God. Right. Would you say your learning of the holy book that you have and your understanding of science, those two things coming together? Yeah. I, Not to I, put words that, in your mouth. No, no. I mean, I, I think that's a good point. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, one, now that I'm thinking about more, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'd say it's probably 35% of what I was brought up in. 35% okay. is what I've read. Mm-hmm. So that's about 70%. And I'd say another 20% would probably be my personal experiences. Okay. And it's the accumulation of them, too. I'm okay. 34 years old. I'm, huh. I mean, I got one foot in the grave here. So, <laughs> you know? <laughs> don't say that. Don't say that. Don't say that. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm 32. I haven't gotten there yet. But I don't want to think about it like that. Right, right, yeah, yeah. You're still young, sprightly. we got the best of our years ahead of us. Right, right. I'm wondering, um, so... Do you think that science is a more reliable way to come to conclusions, or is this method where you have thirty-five percent on personal experience, thirty-five percent on upbringing, and twenty percent on you know yeah. whatever else? Is right. that more reliable than science? I th- I think um, just using science straight out. Yeah, I I think I personally believe in anything that you do, mm-hmm. you can't have all your eggs in one basket, okay. so to speak. You, you need to get all your resources and make an informed decision mm. you can't just base everything off of one thing you can't base everything just off your personal experiences okay you know you can't base all your uh you can't base something off just your past you know you're like your upbringing you mm. have to like reach out reach out and reach out that's doesn't sound right but no you just have to like take everything for account and that's, okay. that's what i try to do it just in everything uh what would it take for you to see that you were wrong would you be able to recognize what that looks like? Uh, yeah, I think I would. But I think it, I think just like any person, it would take longer than it should. What would it look like? What would it look like? Yeah. Um, if you were wrong and this God did not exist, what would that look like? It would look like... Uh, <laughs> um, my first thought, and this is going to be funny, is like... <laughs> if, have you ever seen... Um, oh, what's that movie called? I can't remember what it's called. But anyway, anyway basically... Um, God, what is it called? It's the Alien movie. Oh, I love Alien movies. All it's, right. Uh, Independence Day? No, what, no. What do you want? I got, no, it's I got actually... Prometheus? Prometheus? It's Alien. Prometheus. It's, it's Prometheus? Yes, it's like, okay. you know, the planet was seeded by that's aliens. That's not even the best Alien movie, but no, I'll no, let but, that continue. But that's, the, that's my thought process. That's mm. what I was thinking. Like, so, like, things bursting out of people's chests? No, like... If, what, what are we if, talking like, about? <laughs> like, if aliens came down, uh-huh. and they're like, oh, yeah, we're just coming back to check on y'all. We, we see this planet, like... Four billion years or sure, three sure. billion years ago, sure, 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 sure. we're checking up on you, seeing how everything's going. I'm like, well, shit, you know. That, that, I mean, that that's our God. You know, they're the ones who made us. So that that, that would that, that's what it would take for me to like totally, you know, like, oh, I was totally wrong. Now, okay, that's not exactly the question you're you're asking. For. I guess you're, not really, but I I think it is good to at least start with that as a watermark right. and maybe like see is there anything less yeah. extreme that <laughs> less would be extreme. like. Oh, no, that was the thing that it would take for me to be at least not necessarily yeah. change your position because I'm not here to change your position. I'm just I'm just really we're just trying to reflect. Right, right, right. But what would knock you down a couple of percent on that confidence so that maybe even you, if you still have the same confidence, maybe you're like 85 percent confident now. It's right. like 90 percent. Well, I'll tell you what. I used to be higher in my confidence level. Mm-hmm. And I'll tell you what has brought me back some is just, um, you know, I, I probably used to be like a 95 percent or maybe even a little higher. But just looking at how, like, talking about the, my, the Bible, yeah. there's literally, like, a hundred different versions of it. Yes. And, Even around right now. Yes. Yeah. And, like, it, each each version, you can read it, interpret it differently. Sure. There's, uh, for instance, I don't know if you've... Um, but yeah, I, know, I know you're familiar with the Mark of the Beast, right? Mm-hmm. And, well, so if you read in the old uh, in the new in the old King or in the King James version of the Bible, yeah. it says that it is in it is in your your uh, hand mm-hmm. or in your forehead. Mm-hmm. And the other version, like the New King James version, which is the one I, I like the butt met the boat the most. Okay. And um, but it says it's on. So now you know, a hundred years ago, fifty years ago, it'd make more sense if it was on it, right? Right. 
But, right. But the original but that, saying was it was in. But really, and now it makes more sense if it was in. But truly, and not to get into semantics you know, here, but that's like transcribed from ancient Hebrew. Who knew what they were talking right, about? Right, 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 right. Yeah. yeah, and that and that's kind of like where it start. It's kind of lost me a little bit because so, like. You're right. He- Hebrew and like Adam, for instance, like Adam. Yeah. Um, the original language that meant men. Mm. It didn't mean mm-hmm. Adam. Yeah. Like, oh, you're Adam. No, yeah. It really meant. Yeah. So. Adam. So I mean, it's like things like that, and then. Wouldn't you want to use a reliable method to like determine whether or not that was true or not true? Right. Yeah. So is like basing this off of methods that can be demonstrably wrong or maybe wrong or right and maybe it takes an alien invasion for right, you to right, right, like, right, realize right. that you're wrong right. does that get you to a point where you can justify yourself at a 90% confidence level say again so like um, if you're a 90% confident it'd be cool if you had like a 90% correct all the time method right but it doesn't sound like uh, that is the methods that right. you had presented doesn't sound like they were that confident because I think you, we both agree that you know I bring you believe right, whatever right, you brought right, up to right, right, right. your personal experience that could be right that could be wrong who knows maybe right. it takes an alien invasion right, to change right, your mind right. but who knows right, right if you're right or wrong but science did say yes it is really reliable but it doesn't really have a comment on whether a god exists or doesn't exist right. I don't think there's a science detector that's been right, sold right, right. On, Correct. on Amazon right, that we can right. buy and <laughs> not yet not detect yet. not yet not yet which <laughs> well, would be nice right, which would be nice right. it would definitely raise our confidence but to tell them we don't have that so science isn't saying anything personal experience is unjustified Right. Upbringing is like, well, you just believe whatever you want. What's getting to that 90%? Well, like I said, it's the combination of, of everything. Really? You know? If it, I took spoiled milk, rotten, you know, fruits and like yeah. wet sugar and mix it up in a milkshake, I would get a perfect milkshake. Like, I think what you put into the belief is what you're getting out, right? So like if you have really unreliable methods mm-hmm. and you're putting them together, how do you get a reliable conclusion? It's like the, that's an excellent question. It's, it's, it, you know, the sum is greater than its parts, mm-hmm. you know, you, but, it's, but what you put into it is what you get out. Like if I put, four, if I put four flat tires on my car, will I be able to drive to work tomorrow? Like, you could get further than what you could without, <laughs> without tires. But you if know? it's important to us to You're believe right. true things, right? When we want to have those four good tires or at least inspect the tires ahead of time. Right. What are you using to inspect the belief to get you to that 90% confidence? Oh, it's just, you know, just daily things that happen. I mean, when I find, when we learn something new, uh, scientifically speaking, yeah. you know, if it if it jives with what I believe if it or if it doesn't, I have to take that into account. And mm. then, you know, if, if, I, if they come out with something that says that, I don't know, it just makes it more unlikely that there's a god yeah it, it it'll bring me down some really yeah okay i i'm i'm open i'm i'm pretty open you know i don't know i don't know if science can ever get to the point and I, this is just me pontificating right, on right, my point right right feel free to challenge me on anything no it's i don't right. think science can ever get to the point where it says a god does not exist definitively right, right. i think because of that the question then remains like what did convince you that a God exists? Like, are people better off believing until they're proven wrong? Or should they start believing when they have enough evidence to believe that's the case? That is a uh, very good point. I would say... Hmm. I, I think it depends on what you're talking about specifically. Let's talk about like, your God specifically. Like, my God. Yeah. Okay, I think it's I think it's best to believe uh, first and then you, you can always I don't, I don't know that's a good question I think it's best to, to believe first and then just continuously think about it you know you, just it's just like anything else that you're going to think about or you're going to believe in mm-hmm. you know you always have to continuously think about it you know is this you know is this is there something better out there am, am I thinking about this the wrong way um it is, could I be wrong? Mm-hmm. You know, you just always have to analyze it and just determine if that's. Do you think that's better than withholding belief until you have a good, good evidence? Um, Do you think your method of I'll believe it until I'm proven wrong is better with regard to your God is better than I'm just going to withhold belief until I have a good reason to believe well, you know, to save myself from believing in something that may not actually exist. Well, you know, um, now that I'm thinking about it, I think that's how everyone is actually. When, when just originally, like, mm. you don't come out of the womb think believing in God. It's true. You, so you, you were convinced you, down the road. Yeah, you were. You're convinced eventually down the road. Yeah. And now I'm thinking about that. Yeah. So I mean. So what convinced you? 
I think it's just being around, you know, the people I was uh, was raised around, yeah. I was brought up around. If they you, convinced me, and you know, they just convinced me of it. If you were, and since I've gotten older, you always yeah. question it. You yeah. always have to question everything. Do you think if you're brought up by people who didn't believe in God, you would not believe in a God right now? Uh, I don't know. Mm. I, I don't know honestly because there's. Would it be yeah. any different from being raised by Indians who believed in Vishnu and you thinking Vishnu was the actual God? No, I, I think I think if I was if I was brought up by Hindus. That the chances of you being Hindu would be probably oh yeah strong. I think and so and if you were brought up by non-believers I think I, now see that's the thing like I think I think it's easier to believe in God mm-hmm. than it is not to believe in God I think okay. not believing God God is is harder because there's just so much sorry I thought she was wearing a panda suit outfit normally <laughs> not like to break contact you're getting really deep and I'm loving this conversation no that's all good like I was like. Something's like, where am I? Is that a panda, panda suit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Panda suit. <laughs> Do I have to get up and run? I take you with me, but yeah. Yeah, right. no, I'd, I'd be cool. All right, sorry. No, I'm sorry. Right. sorry. So uh, you were saying it's easier to believe, believe in God than not or, believe in God. Right. Why do you think that? Well, I think it's just the human nature that, I mean, I hate to say it, but the world's a scary place, mm. you know? And uh, you always want to have that belief that someone is always watching out for you. You always want that blanket, that yeah. security blanket. And I think... Does that feeling make the belief true? I'd say so. I mean, to really? a certain extent. So, I mean, even, 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 like, to a certain extent. Like, it, it now, would it be 90% true? No. But would it be 30% true? I mean, just imagine, like, when you're a little kid, you're scared yeah. of the dark. Yeah. I mean, how did you overcome that? I thought always, that was like a monster in the dark or something. Oh, yeah. yeah. You, you had to come up with something yeah. to protect you from it. Superman's so, there to protect me. Yeah, right? That's my go-to. I yeah. love Superman. Hey, you can't beat Superman. You can't beat Superman. <laughs> no. <laughs> Superman's unbeatable. You're right. But right? not the superhero movie version of Superman. Right. I mean, like, the original comic book, Faster Than a Speed. Uh, oh, yeah, Stronger right. Than a Locomotive, right. Leap Over Building a City. Right. Classic. Classic. I'm thinking, though, like, if I had a coin, right, and I flip the coin catch it and it's not a trick coin but mm-hmm. it's like right. it's either heads or tails right i caught it 50 50 i don't know if it's heads or tails you know if it's heads or tails right this coin do you know i have no clue all right so if someone comes to the table and says i'm very scared i'd be very scared if that's tail that coin was heads right right so therefore it must be tails right because it would it would terrify me the other way right right it's my human nature to believe that it's heads right does that make this heads? he might be right but like is that even a reliable way to come to the is conclusion? it reliable no but i think that's i mean if you, I, I think if you believe, if you, how's it, you know, it's it's kind of like the cat. Yeah, it's alive. Oh, Schrodinger's cat? Yeah, Schrodinger's cat. Yeah, yeah, it's alive. Even though you don't know, but it makes it, you know, true to a certain extent. I don't know if that oh, makes sense. Um, you know, um, like, the, like, like the coin. I mean, yeah, the coin is. Yeah, I like yeah. the coin. Yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's heads. It could and, be heads. And, and when the be. thing is, we could never show it and just tell people it's heads. Yeah. And I bet you a hundred dollars we could get more than fifty percent of the people to, to agree with us. Yeah, but and does so, that agreement make it true? Like, does the populace agreeing on one thing because of their human nature make the coin actually be heads? Absolutely no. But, it, but I don't know. Like, is there if any... everyone agrees on something? I mean, yeah. is it true? I, I don't know. Okay. You, you know, I, that's a that's yeah. a deep question. Yeah. I. I, 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 just one last question then. Yeah, if yeah. you're heading out. No. Um, is there any more question that's more important to you than whether or not this God exists? No. And I guess this is my follow up last question. Sorry about <laughs> it. But if this is, in fact, the most important question to you, shouldn't you have the most reliable way of coming to that conclusion? And why settle for anything less? All right. I, uh, yeah, you have to have the most reliable way to figure it out, but what's the most reliable way to, to know something that big, you know? Yeah, when you don't know the answer, like I said, I flip that coin, I catch it, it's on the back of my hand. I don't have enough information to come to a conclusion. There's a chance that I don't know, like as you said and mm-hmm. I said, isn't just an out or an option, but is actually the best answer until we have enough conclusive evidence. I don't know. Yeah. It's a really uncomfortable answer. No, no, but no, it's no, actually it's, a really no. It's a good question. Yeah, it's a, it's a really too. good question. Um, 
would I don't know be a better answer with regard to the existence of this God than I believe it, but I'm waiting to be until I'm proven wrong by science, right. which isn't capable of proving it wrong in the first place. No. Yeah, now that, it's a good question. Now, for instance, on the, the coin, yeah. yeah, that's the best answer. But then you, like, with God yeah. and gods, I mean, with any religion, yeah, sure. I mean, I don't know, isn't necessarily the, 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 the best. It's not the answer. You can't give that answer. Why not? Because in these religions that you, you have to be like, yeah, I believe in it. You know, that's part of it. You have to believe in them. Why do you have to? That's just part of the the, the thing. The part of the bit, you know? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's part of the Kool-Aid, brother. You got to drink it, you know? Uh, sorry, sorry. No, that's all right. That's just how it's, you know, you have to believe in them and follow their teachings. If, you know. What does that say about the religion that won't allow you to have a position where you're just like, oh, it won't. If I have to get in, if I have to buy the whole yeah, you gotta drink the cool no, yeah, yeah. before I can even like inspect anything. Right? What does that say? Does that say something more about the religion than it does about the actual conclusion that they're reaching? Like, let's say there is. Right. Let's say let's without say, a doubt, one hundred percent, there is a god. This right. god does exist. Right. But in order for you to pick the right one, you have to go wholesale into a specific religion, right. and you don't. You can't that, question the tenets. You can't question the how they use right, right. the philosophy. Now, and that, and that, well, like that. that's part of the reason I'm only ninety percent because like there's. Like you got some like some like Pentecostals believe that you gotta be Pentecostal. Yeah. Mormons believe there's only hundred and twenty seven thousand that are gonna end heaven, which yeah. I'm just like Latter day Saints. Yeah, uh, or something, yeah. Seventh day Adventists can't work on Sunday, etc. They all have right, their right, own right. little thing. No, I like that, not working on Sunday. That'd be sweet, you know. Sure. Sitting at the house, chilling. Uh I think their day is Saturday, but or something yeah, I, have, yeah, I don't know how it yeah, works. Yeah. I'll be honest it's the seventh day. Saturday is the seventh day. But even day. if you're going outside of Abrahamic religions, like you're mm-hmm. going to yeah. like, you know, the Bhagavad Gita and you're reading right. about Vishnu and Shiva right, and their right. relationship with each other, you have to believe that there's castes and or how right. they Yeah, do I don't know it. how they do that. So, yeah. yeah. So like it's not necessarily a, you know, teach his own because some people have very different owns. But because of that, because there's so many people who are very confident those true, and I bet you I can probably find a 90% confident Hindu, oh, a 90% yeah. confident Mormon. Oh, yeah. Can they all be right? Well, that's what I was saying earlier. I think that I, I could see that I could I could see that you know we're all we all, we all believe in the same God. He's just called different things. There are which, but there are some gods who are fundamentally different than the Abrahamic God, right? right. Or people who use right. faith, for right, example, right, right. to believe that there's no God, like right. who claim absolutely 100 percent no God exists. Right. And those people I put in the same boats as the people who say 100 percent a God does exist, mm-hmm. at least from my perspective. Right? Can a person who believes 100 percent that a God doesn't exist and a person who believes a God does exist, both to the same absolute certainty, both be correct? Say it one more time. Someone so who I believes in people, God. People who, a person who believes someone, in God and a person who believes there is no God. Can they both be correct at the same time? I don't think so, no. Right. So if they're using... So I, a question would be then, like, what method are they using to come to their conclusion, right? And is it reliable or is it not reliable? Right. Um, so let's talk about the person who doesn't believe in God at all. Okay, yeah. So, I mean, they're probably going to use, you know things that have happened to them in their life sure yeah you know, they'll probably say the way they're brought up the, you know personal experiences yeah, personal experiences and mm-hmm. then on top of that they're going to look at science yeah and, yeah yeah right exactly. and so because some people look at science and they're just like i don't know they're just like oh well we just come we're just we're just particles and, yeah, and yeah. see that person's using the exact same methods that you're using right and coming to the exact opposite conclusion right and you guys can't both be correct right right so what can what can i as the guy in the middle who doesn't know anything right right yeah you're just trying to learn you're just yeah i'm just trying to learn like yeah, right? how so, do i figure out right. which one of you guys is right what should i be paying attention to right and see i i just see me personally i i look at uh, science as what like that's how god does his thing you know mm-hmm. like so okay I don't know if you bake or not. I don't. I, bu- I love baking. Yeah. You really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love eating baking, so... Oh, you said bacon or baking? Oh, baking. Like, baking. I'm sorry. Like, cooking. Baking, yeah. I love cooking. Yeah, cooking, yeah. Okay. I'm totally into it. So, like, okay, That's you know... That's a cute thought. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I imagine it as if, like, like science is, like, the ingredients, you know? Like, you okay. know, it's the cooking part. Sure. And, um... <laughs> and, um... Your wallet's on the ground, let me know it or not. Holy crap. My wallet? Uh, somebody's wallet. I Dude, that's my wallet. Thank awesome. you so much. There you go. Great guy. <laughs> Thank you very much. So I, See you, doggy. I was saying, or what I was thinking is that um, we're just the people in the in, in the, the, the shop when everything's said and done okay. you know, right now. 
we're just looking at the pastries. We we don't know exactly. We know how the what we know what's in the cupcake. Mm. You know, so does that make sense at all? I'm so God's the baker. He's he he's using the ingredients to put us together. He's made he's made you know he made like the elements. Sure. And he's put all this stuff together. Yeah. And I foresee I see him as like you know like a um, a watchmaker or something like that. Mm-hmm. In, in regards to like the universe you know like the earth revolves around the sun so many times he, are he's, you saying like the complexity of the universe yes. is an indication to you that it was intelligently designed yeah or like made to, by I mean, God to, yeah yeah to a certain extent because like because if you for instance like if you have a watchmaker or a clockmaker, you mm-hmm. know they're very intricate pieces of, of, of work and they can make a watch a watch or a clock and wind it up and yeah. they're going to tell you okay in so many days this watch is going to stop. Sure. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now, if me and you look at this watch and try to make a watch like this, we couldn't do it. But we can have an idea of how it works. Mm. But we couldn't do that. So, and I, that's how I see like the, the cl- complexity of the universe. Is he's, you know, he's the same thing as a watchmaker. He's just on a much higher scale than we are. Can I throw something at you? Yeah. If I had a light bulb that took a thousand steps, I designed a light bulb that takes a thousand steps to screw into a hole. Right. Versus a light bulb that takes one. Mm-hmm. Step to screw into a hole. Right. Which light bulb's better designed? Well, I mean, if you're just looking at that one aspect, it does the exact same thing. Both light bulbs do the right. exact same thing. Uh, I would say the one that takes one screw. Mm. But would, wouldn't you say then that simplicity is actually the hallmark of design rather than complexity? Why would you look at something that's very complex and say that had to have been better designed than something that's far more simple? Well, well, well it just depends on the, the application you're you're putting you're looking at it in. Like for instance, like the light bulb that mm-hmm. only takes one screw. Do you have little kids around? I mean, or do you have someone who it could reach up there and unscrew it yeah and who doesn't need to unscrew it yeah where you know the thousand screws i mean if you have someone who could potentially unscrew it and you need that light bulb to be in there do what you it, see what i'm saying what a simple self of oh, what a simple fail safe to protect kids from light bulbs be better than a very complicated or really convoluted highly complex fail safe um yes it would in that regards but okay. here's, the, here's the thing here's the thing like, i'm wondering so you, i was just saying I think we got to the, fun, the the foundation of the belief really is that uh, your God exists. I was just kind of like, I was really interested in the complexity right. argument right. because from my perspective, it seems like people value simplicity in things. We like smaller phones. We like right, faster right, cars. Right. We like things that take up less energy. We like clothes that are made from mm-hmm. simple fabrics. Right, lines. Right. Complexity has never been a thing that we looked at and said, yeah, that's proof of something really amazing. It's, complex has always been something we try to stay away from. Right. So when we look at the complexity of the world, it's really surprising that we always point to existence of a God or proof of that. Right. Well, two things. First of all, you're right. People do like the more simple things. Yeah. But, you know, like... Um, that's where our design you, goes. So you have a watch on. That's, I sure do. That's a pretty complex watch. It's a very complex watch. But I then, would love for it to be simpler. Really? Yeah. Why would I want this to be any more complicated than it is? It's hard enough for me to just check the weather on this thing. Right. I got to take four taps. If I could just do it in a simple no, way, that'd be great. I, I actually used to sell watches. Really? Okay. Uh, hi, higher end watches. Nice. And um, the more complicated the watches, the more expensive this, and the more people would want it. Mm. And so that's why I was using the watch, the watch thing. But also, I was going to say back to com- the, the the complexity of it all is that um, it's it's I would say it's simply com- complex because yeah. like yeah everything's complex, but it's kind of done in such a way it's just you do it one time mm-hmm. it's set and it's just like a clock it's just for the lack of better words it's like a clock it'll just keep running and running and running do you think that observation is a really good way for you to come to 100 percent or 90 percent confidence that your god exists do you think anyone else can point to the same thing and say that their god exists or point to the same thing oh and yeah say that this is proof that yeah god and, exists? and that's why i'm at 90 percent because mm-hmm. like we you know for instance, like we can both look here at this tree back here. You can sure. see the leaves blowing or yeah. shaking on it. I'll, you know, I could say it's the wind. Someone could be like, "Oh, it's just the tree moving." Okay. You know, it's, you know, we could come to. We're human. It's, it's human nature to come to. Two people can come to two totally different uh, I, uh, opinions about something. Sure. By looking at the same. You, same set of data, same thing. If because if we live in a world like that, do you think anyone's justified, or at least better, or in a good situation by just saying, "I don't know which of you guys are correct. 
I'll wait until there's enough evidence for me to convince me that one of you is correct. And until then, my position is just, I don't know. And I'll wait until I don't I get think it, I don't think that's a bad, I don't think that's a bad position to be in. Mm. I think it's, I think it's re- relatively smart. I, and honestly, with 90%, sure. I mean, that's still kind of saying, I don't know. Isn't really? It? Isn't it? I don't know. I, I think See, 90% is yeah. pretty high. I got to no, be honest yeah, with you. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. That's what I'm, I mean. I would I say like 50% smart. is the I don't, I don't know. know. Yeah. I would say, ah. I would say 50% is the I don't know. Well, I, yeah, but I, I think say it's, 90% it, is I think the it's I different. do know. And I think I, it's v- different variations of I don't know. I don't know, oh. but I'm pretty sure it's this. Oh, okay. You see what I'm okay, saying? Okay, okay, okay. That sounds, not putting words in your mouth, but that, that doesn't sound as strong as 90%. You that know, sounds maybe like 70s, 80s. No, I don't see, care about see, numbers. See, we can't even agree on numbers. what. Yeah, we, you, yeah, like I said. But that's how it is. I don't care about but, numbers. See, and and that's why I think like 100% is 100% like. 100%, no I'm, not doubt. Sure, I'm never changing. Never changing. I don't need any more information for the rest of my life. Right. But 90%, you are keeping the doors open just a little bit. Oh, yeah, yeah. The yeah, door is yeah. always open. Okay, Tim, would you mind if I just did a quick summary before? Sure, yeah, know? no problem. So it sounded like uh, you're 90% confident that God exists. You were basing off of personal experience and the way how you're brought up, but we came to the conclusion that maybe that's not the most foolproof method right. to come into a right, belief. Right. But you are open. And right. In fact, you even mentioned some things that would actually change your mind. And I thought that was pretty awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, you some of the proofs that you also demonstrated was like uh, the complexity of the world and like the watchmaker argument mm-hmm. as proofs that your God exists. Mm-hmm. But it thinks it seems like there's ways that you can value simplicity over complexity, at least with regard to mm-hmm. certain things. Right. It'd be cool if we could um, think about this maybe a little bit more. And if I ever see you again, this would be a wonderful conversation. Yeah, it sounds good, brother. Tim, wonderful conversation. Hey, nice meeting you, meet you, man. Thank What's you, man. Ty? I'm Ty. It's nice Ty. to meet you. Yeah. I was thinking about that the entire time. I was like, damn, I think it's his name. What'd like, you think of the conversation? Was it cool? No, Didn't it was want cool, to step yeah. on anything. No, it was cool. I, yeah? I enjoyed it. Yeah. Yeah. I think it was, I had yeah. a good time. It would be better really if it was like a beer or something. <laughs> here, but, I mean, normally, it's, when, when you have conversations like this or politics, yeah. you, got, you have to have a beer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it was good, man. Nice meeting you. Cool. Nice meeting you too, Tim. No, it's just a personal hobby. Yeah, I really believe that even people with like really strong different beliefs or whatever there's a way to have the conversation where it's positive and where oh, people yeah. learn things from yeah. I uh, I travel a lot yeah and I just got back from Europe okay holy shit man. I'm telling you where that. in Europe because I spent like a year and a half there no way really in Sweden oh uh, I, I haven't uh, I went to Sweden like three years ago really really where? yeah I went to uh... what do you guys think about that yeah cool cool Cherry picked? No. So on my YouTube channel, and you guys should all have my card by now, every week I upload a brand new video and they all have the same tone. This is just one of my earlier ones and I wanted to share that with you. But the the main thing that we got out of that is that street epistemology is not an uncomfortable experience. It's not an interview. It's not an interrogation. It's a conversation that you're having with people. And I really think by the end of that conversation, Tim and I became like really good friends. Like uh, it, the video didn't capture it and I kind of edited it out, but like after the talk was over, he came back to the table and we ended up talking about like movies and like places that we've been to and just having a really good talk for like about another hour or so. Almost, almost done with the talk. If, actually, if possible, could we have questions immediately afterwards? Um, if, if you guys have time, can I show one last video? I promise it's much shorter. This is the cool guy or this is the guy who believed that all laws should be replaced with the Ten Commandments. <laughs> It's all laws should be replaced with the Ten Commandments. Young guy too. I was really surprised. I think it's a really, really cool watch just to see um, what happens when talking about the methodology doesn't necessarily work all the time. Uh, when I asked about methodology, he switched into preacher mode and you'll get stopped by that sometimes. So a street epistemology is not one thing. We're still trying to figure out interesting and novel and effective ways to keep a productive conversation, but to keep people to consider and reconsider their positions on whether or not they're actually reliable. So this is what it looks like when asking about the methodology doesn't work. I think it's a cool watch. Only 10 minutes and nice one. What do you think? I think so, yeah. Do you think it's possible with just those 10 rules to have world peace? I think so. Could we talk about that? Yeah. Okay, okay. How confident are you that that's the case? I'm very confident. From like zero to 100%. 100%. 100%, you don't need any more evidence. You're absolutely Record. All right, great. Five minutes. Uh, you, you want to talk about religion? Is that uh, sure? All right. Uh, I'm Ty, by the way. I'm Rusty. Rusty. Good to meet you. Good to meet you too, man.
All right, so you probably got a lot of questions for me. Uh, which religion are we talking about, then? So my question is, is, is a blend of Christianity and Jewish, is it possible? I, if you were to ask me particularly, I think they're both Abrahamic religions. They're by... But I think what's, what's the definitive point of Christianity? The belief in Jesus Christ? I'd say so. Yeah, right. If you don't have that, you're not a Christian. Is that, would you say that's accurate? Yeah. Christian okay. would be a follower of Christ. A Christian would be a follower of Christ? Yeah, yeah. So I think up to a point, blend. You can still have Moses. You can probably still have everything in the Old Testament. But to be a Christian, you would have to have that extra thing. What do you think? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, I would agree. So my, my question is, is why do some Christians not keep some Jewish beliefs? Oh. Does that make sense? Why do some Christians not keep? I don't know. Talk to me. I know about the covenant. I know some about, like, um, uh, uh, circumcision along yeah. with that. Let's see. But I'm interested in your perspective, man. Uh, so How my, are you, sir? I would say the big question is, is does a Christian keep the Ten Commandments, which is Old Testament Jewish? Oh, that's interesting. So you mentioned the covenant, which yes. would, that would be a major thing. Mm. So, what is your opinion? Should a Christian keep the Ten Commandments or not? I don't know. I don't know. I can't be honest with you. I can't name all the Ten Commandments off the top of my head right now. Um, I don't think there was anything in there that was particularly volatile. So, if they kept all those commandments, I don't think society would be any worse for the wear. I don't think there was anything particularly bad in there. You want to? Does that sound reasonable? Yeah, I think. Uh, well, here's a better question. Okay. Would could there be peace on Earth? If everyone kept the Ten Commandments, that's not good enough, in my opinion. Okay, so why not? I think there's probably some more complex international dynamics at play that are not expressed to the explicit nature that's necessary in just the Ten Commandments alone. We'll probably have like trade agreements going on. We'll have land disputes that are probably going on, ongoing even up to now, because we still currently have them right now, even with the Ten Commandments. Um, you know, there's things about taxes, military use, you know, personal rights, uh, things change every day. And I think just 10 rules is not good enough to encapsulate all the problems that I could probably foresee. Mm. What do you think? I think so, yeah. You think it's possible with just those 10 rules to have world peace? I think so. Could we talk about that? Yeah. Okay, okay. How confident are you that that's the case? I'm very confident. From like 0 to 100%. 100%. 100%. You don't need any more evidence. You're absolutely close on the position. You think that's absolutely true? Yep. Okay. 100%. What got you to that 100%? Uh, really? Well, uh, you you were getting all specifics, really, but if you were to category, categorize everything into those 10, could, how could you not? Um I guess I'm asking you, like, what's the method that you're using to come to 100% confidence that you only need those 10 rules to explain all dynamics of law? All right, so dynamics would be specifically the first four and the last six. Okay. So the first four would deal specifically with love for God. Okay. Uh, which would be don't worship idols. Uh, don't specifically put... Christian God. Yeah, right, right. The Ten okay. Commandments. So. Okay. Uh, no idols, don't put any other gods before me, mm. uh, don't take the name of the Lord God in vain, and the Sabbath day, and then the last six would be specifically love for your fellow man, mm. which is honor your father and mother, uh, don't commit adultery, don't murder, don't steal, and don't covet. So most of the things that you mentioned would fall under the category of covenant. Okay. So what do you think? Um, what do you think of like uh, gun control or like topics of such as like I have I right now there's like a board of things that we're allowed to bring onto this park area and we're not supposed to have wheeled stuff past that line. And I'm wondering like that's probably just like a city regulation law. They probably don't want to be insurance liability past a certain point. Like, okay, there are some, like, okay. really, really, really specific granular things. Do you think the Ten Commandments gives, like, an interpretation that everyone could easily get to? 
consider that, or should we just have a specific loot, a law that says, by the way, don't bring your bike pass here, we don't have a law, or we don't have insurance coverage past this point, and we don't want to be sued. I see what you're this saying. This stuff takes a lot of money to keep maintained. So you, you're, you're talking on terms of, like, local... Yeah. Um, statutes. Yeah. And I'm talking on terms of more of the Constitution. Oh, okay. But I'm thinking that granularity helps peace. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Would you agree? Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. That's, That's what I'm coming from. Yeah, yeah. I'm talking about as a whole. So you would still want the granularity. I see what you're saying. So you're saying, big picture, have these Ten Commandments. Just, it's cold, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, sorry. I'm shivering a little no, bit. No, I am too. I am too. <laughs> <laughs> and we're almost at five minutes. You're saying, big picture, the theme of the Ten Commandments is pretty good. Because a lot of things fall within those themes. But the granularity is still necessary for like the day-to-day. And I think the day-to-day is a really big component for like maintaining peace. Yeah, so when you're really talking about the Ten Commandments, you're actually talking about matters of the heart. Uh, don't steal, don't commit adultery, uh, don't murder. So it's actually... when you Because you mentioned something about gun control. Yeah. So that's another question. Would it be necessary to have gun control if you kept the Ten Commandments? Because really think about uh, the abuse of a gun. Mm. Why is that gun being used? Oh, I meant... What's the motive? I didn't mean so much in gun abuse. I meant more like um, if I have a gun and I want to give it to my nephew, uh, there are means that I do that as a a law-abiding gun owner. Uh, And if I want to buy a gun, there are ways that I can do that as a law-abiding gun owner. And if I want to auction a gun, there's a matter for me to do it. And they're not all the same. They're all very different. And I think it's good to know that there's a granularity of rules there because it makes it easier to track. It makes it easier to maintain your guns that you have. And it just makes it easier to track in case someone takes my gun. Ooh, uh, my batteries are gone. <laughs> but yeah, I just think the granularity there is, is useful. That's what I meant. I didn't mean okay, like okay, okay. buy a gun and start shooting people. Everyone no, always no, goes no, to no. that. I'm like, no, no, no. They're all really good people who own guns. But like, yeah, as yeah. gun control is concerned, there's a body that maintains that. There's like a record keeping body organization that maintains it. There's like a lobbying force that manages like the representation of people who do own guns and don't want over legislation by government bodies. I think these are all useful aspects that may not necessarily be explicitly carried over by uh, uh, gun control in general. Like, mm-hmm. do you think? Do you think if we just had the Ten Commandments, we wouldn't need more rules to explain things? As far as uh, some of the, like, the local statutes and stuff, like, uh, you know, speeding on the highway, stuff mm. like that, you're not going to get that in the No, minutes. you're not. But as far as matters of the heart, would you speed if you kept the Ten Commandments? I hear what you're saying. I hear You'd what be you're a saying. law-abiding about, about citizen. Yeah, no? yeah, and I think then if we had a God that said, by the way, I also want you want you driving 60 miles an hour on I-75, <laughs> I'd be like, well, I'm a law abiding or I'm a God-abiding person. So 65 it is. Maybe a little 76. I don't know, me too. <laughs> Power up. Cool. Rusty, let me just ask you one follow-up. Then, in the sense of Ten Commandments to explain all laws, every law, are you still at 100%? Would you be 100% on that? Specifically, uh, Constitution, yeah. Not just Constitution, but local, precinct, gun control, everything. Would you still be at 100%? And if you are, that's fine. I don't know that I can answer that. I think that's a better answer than absolute certainty. Rusty, I really appreciate the talk. (laughs) Thanks, man. Now it's too cold. I want you to warm up. (laughs) (laughs) Wrap up. What did we learn from all this? So uh, I think straight epistemology is a really incredible tool to have good conversations with people who may not necessarily agree with you or who do agree with you, but for at least both of you guys to have a fair and unbiased approach to assess how you reached your conclusions and whether or not the methods that you're using to reach your conclusions are reliable or not. Um, it can be done with one people or one person. It can be done on groups of people. And it's a really fantastic way to avoid closing down people into the methodologies or their dogma and not being willing to open up and consider how they reach their conclusions. There's a quote on that I read that I can't really remember from Facebook that basically says, um, one of the things we can't talk about or like a couple of things we can't talk about is like uh, money, politics, or religion. 
But it's not because that those subjects are taboo. It's just because we don't have an effective way to have those kinds of conversations and no one really knows how to have that. And the only reason why I disagree with that comment now is because I think that we do have a method to have those kinds of conversations. I think street epistemology can empower all of us to have a really good way to get through to people who have these walls that are set up between them and to break down that wall and actually have effective communications with people about anything. Okay. Um, so again, my name is Tyrone Wells. I believe, or I'm working on a way that I can talk to anyone about anything, and I think you guys can too. I think we all can. Thank you. Thank you.